everyone has dignity and value as a human being. Being different can't be the reason for discrimination. Understanding the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. What is the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities? We see and hear a lot of news stories every day. A story about volunteers helping out their neighbors in need. Or a story about women, persons with disabilities, and multicultural families in need getting back on their feet. These stories warm our heart. A society where anyone can live happily is created when every human right is treated equally. However, the effort of many people is required in order to respect the rights that belong to all of us from birth. No racism, no female discrimination, rights of children, rights of migrant workers, and rights of persons with disabilities that we have taken for granted are in fact all created through the experience of discrimination and pain of many people. The value in each right was recognized afterwards and the convention was adopted. Then, from now on, shall we learn about how the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was adopted, starting with respecting human rights? In this lecture, we will learn about what the UN CRPD is and its details, and the status of ratification on the Convention. What is the UN CRPD? Hello, from now on, we are going to start learning about the UN CRPD. Yes, I am very excited to learn about the Convention which is for the rights of persons with disabilities. Then shall we get started? In the past, persons with disabilities were thought to be physically and mentally incompetent. They were also believed to be not able to fully carry out their social tasks. Just because of having a disability, there were cases of being separated from their families and society, experiencing unfair treatment. Some were limited in opportunities or rights to medical and educational benefits, and were even confined in facilities against their own will, and experienced discrimination and violence. In order to eradicate these cases, the rights of persons with disabilities were made into the Convention. I see. Then, when was the UN CRPD made? Persons with disabilities and human rights activists have been struggling to raise the human rights of persons with disabilities. As a result, the UN adopted the World Program of Action Concerning Disabled Persons in 1980. For the social life and development of persons with disabilities, it aimed for the full participation and equality of persons with disabilities. The following year, 1981, was designated as the International Year of Disabled Persons and strived to make a negative awareness better towards persons with disabilities. Later on, the need for the international human rights treaties that ensure the human rights of persons with disabilities came into the fore. And finally, in December 2006, the UN CRPD was adopted. Wow! I didn't realize such efforts were put forth to create the Convention. I want to know more about its purpose. All right, let's find out about the purpose of the Convention. The UNCRPD was created to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities, and to promote respect for their inherent dignity. Here, persons with disabilities include those who are restricted in complete and effective social participation due to the interactions between environmental factors, including cultural, physical, and institutional barriers of society, and individual factors such as differences in physical and or mental abilities. 
The purpose of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities, despite the different viewpoints between countries and differences are rooted in different cultures. Then, does it mean that human rights and freedoms of persons with disabilities were not ensured properly in the past? No. In the past, persons with disabilities were treated as targets for treatment and beneficiaries of welfare, rehabilitation, and medical services because of the social atmosphere that did not see them as independent and dignified human beings. There were suppression, exclusion, negative perception, negative attitudes, violence, and abuse towards them. As persons with disabilities were treated unfavorably just because of having disabilities. Through the UNCRPD, the human rights of persons with disabilities were ensured. Also, it worked for everyone to enjoy equal human rights and freedoms and promoted respect for the inherent dignity. It aimed to create an equal society where everyone lives in harmony, regardless of having a disability. As the convention was created, the fact that the rights of persons with disabilities were not significantly improved despite the international efforts to empower them have formed an international consensus. The convention guarantees the participation of OPDs so that the voices of persons with disabilities are reflected during the enactment process of the convention, related conferences, and when confirming the fulfillment of the convention. The UNCRPD, which reflects the voices of various people, is important as an international achievement for the enhancement of human rights of persons with disabilities. The characteristics of the convention is that it is based on the social model. It reflected the authorities and self determination of persons with disabilities. It declared the principle of active participation. It declared policy changes toward human rights perspective. Not considering persons with disabilities as a target of services, and it clarified the principle of non discrimination. <laughs> Details of the UNCRPD The UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to Create for the Equal Society for All. I am curious of what does it consist of? Then let's learn about the details of the UNCRPD, shall we? It consists of two parts convention and optional protocol, according to the format of international treaties. The main convention consists of the preamble and 50 articles. The optional protocol contains the investigation procedure and the petition procedure related to the convention. Let's first take a look at the composition of the main convention. The main convention consists of four sections. Section 1 contains a clause that comprehensively affects the purpose, definition, and all the articles of the convention. And in Section 2, it discusses specific rights. Mostly, it comprises contents that coincide with articles in other human rights conventions. But it also contains clauses that discuss topics distinctively in the UNCRPD only. Additionally, in Section 3, it contains important mandatory actions of confirming the fulfillment of the UNCRPD. States' parties of the Convention are required to participate in the fulfillment process of the Convention in a domestic and international level. In relation, there is a clause that recommends OPDs to confirm how well the states' parties of the Convention fulfill the articles stated in the Convention. The final section 4 covers the content of all procedures of the convention, including issuance, signing, ratification, reservation, and revision. I see. I have a question though. In the section 1, what are the articles that affect all the other articles? The articles of the UNCRPD, which cover a wide variety of content, Are all interconnected with one another. 
Among these, there are specific articles that affects all the other articles. Article 3. General principles and Article 4. General obligations correspond to this. You can think of it as principles and obligations to be fulfilled throughout this convention. Among these, Article 3, General Principles, consists of the following contents. Respect for inherent dignity, individual autonomy, including the freedom to make one's own choices, and independence of persons, non-discrimination, full and effective participation and inclusion in society. Respect for difference and acceptance of persons with disabilities as part of human diversity and humanity. Equality of opportunity. Accessibility. Equality between men and women. And respect for the evolving capacities of children with disabilities and respect for the right of children with disabilities to preserve their identities. These principles can be seen as an attitude agreed internationally for the enhancement of the rights of persons with disabilities and its fulfillment. It is also used for the interpretation and application of all the articles in the Convention, and it can be used to review whether the principles are realized in connection with laws and system of each state party. Now I understand about the general principles. I have one more question. I've heard that there are people particularly important in this convention. Who are they? They are women and children with disabilities. Women and children with disabilities are women and persons with disabilities, children and persons with disabilities, respectively, which make them more vulnerable to discrimination. In the Convention, women and children with disabilities are stipulated in Article 6 and Article 7, respectively. Other articles that need to include the women and children with disabilities are based on these articles as well. Then, shall we look at the Article 6 and 7? Article 6 Women with Disabilities states parties recognize that women and girls with disabilities are subject to multiple discrimination, and in this regard shall take measures to ensure the full and equal enjoyment by them of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. States parties shall take all appropriate measures to ensure the full development, advancement, and empowerment of women for the purpose of guaranteeing them the exercise and enjoyment of the human rights and fundamental freedoms set out in the present convention. Article 7. Children with Disabilities States parties shall take all necessary measures to ensure the full enjoyment by children with disabilities of all human rights and fundamental freedoms on an equal basis with other children. In all actions concerning children with disabilities, the best interests of the child shall be a primary consideration. States' parties shall ensure that children with disabilities have the right to express their views freely on all matters affecting them, their views being given due weight in accordance with their age and maturity, on an equal basis with other children and to be provided with disability and age-appropriate assistance to realize that right. Okay, I see. It seems like the convention holds a lot of important contents. Then, what is the optional protocol? The optional protocol was created to secure the efficacy of the legal procedure of the convention. If individuals or groups of individuals claim to be victims of a violation by the state party, they can appeal to the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which leads to the investigation procedure targeted on the state party. Let's learn more about the optional protocol in the next lecture. All right. I have one more question, though. In order to fully implement what is stipulated in the Convention, wouldn't realistic budgets and expenses be needed? You're right. For example, there are areas where economical cost and social burden occur, such as social protection, independent life in community, education, health and rehabilitation. 
Even so, states' parties must prepare resources and make the best use of it to gradually carry out the convention. In principle, signing on the convention creates an obligation to undertake immediate measures. In particular, the right to life and the right to liberty, such as security of person and freedom from torture, must be carried out immediately. Preparing and making the best use of resources is also a duty that the state's parties must carry out. Here is a short quiz. What is not a correct description of the general principles of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities? A. It affects all the articles in the Convention. B. It is an attitude that was agreed internationally for the enhancement and fulfillment of rights of persons with disabilities. C. It is stated in the optional protocol. What is your answer? The answer is C. The general principles are stated in the main convention, not the optional protocol. Current Status of Ratification of the Convention The UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I wish that all the countries follow what is stipulated in the convention. I agree. As of April 2021, the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, adopted in December 2006, is currently ratified by 182 countries and signed by 164 countries. The Republic of Korea ratified on the convention along with 20 countries, including Australia and Saudi Arabia. The EU ratified in 2010, and most recently, St. Lucia ratified on the convention in June 2020. There are 182 countries ratified in total. It is great to hear that 182 countries are participating for the rights of persons with disabilities. Then, how well is Korea following the convention? In the case of Korea, the UNCRPD was ratified in December 2008 and enacted in January 2009. However, among the convention, Article 25E, Health, and the optional protocol were reserved. In relation, Korea was recommended by the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2014, and five years later, agreed to ratify on the convention through the combined second and third periodic reports. Currently, research and related activities are being carried out for the ratification. We were able to learn about the UNCRPD and its details. You are right. Starting next class, let's learn more about the measures on how to ensure the rights of persons with disabilities. What is the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities? Let's summarize what we have learned. UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is an international convention to ensure the rights of persons with disabilities in every aspect of life. UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities considers the position of each government while reflecting and including the opinions of persons with disabilities. It is an international achievement for the fulfillment of human rights of persons with disabilities. UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities consists of a preamble and 50 articles in the Convention along with an optional protocol that includes the investigation and petition procedure. Actively reducing the disadvantages and providing appropriate treatment to persons with disabilities in accordance with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is the responsibility of the state parties. As of April 2021, the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is currently ratified by 182 countries and signed by 164 countries.